All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. It's been a while, but I guess I'm getting back into the gist of it. So, all right, so today it's all about window curtains and how to create them. And it's a very simple process. And I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just skip all the, the bibble babble and get right into it because, you know, there's a lot to do with this, but it's pretty easy as far as, you know, how to do it. So, but yeah, this is basically sort of a simple curtain that I made. Um, I'm not really going off of a lot of a very good reference, but I do have a reference photo that I am using to sort of reference this image, reference this model. So I'm obviously not, you know, doing this off the top of my head because, you know, obviously you're going to need something to use. So, but yeah, anyway, let's get started. So let's go ahead and just delete all this. And let's start off fresh. So let's do a new scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you want to do is create a, uh, go to create and get your pencil curve tool. And then you make sure you want to be in your top view. So for this, you're going to want to basically draw out a simple curve resembling somewhat of a curtain. So let me just show you here. So I just kind of go make some loops. And the more loops you have, probably the better. So, not really the best uh, loop I have, so maybe I can go try a little better. So, I'll just go like this. So, alright, so basically this is the curve that I've created. It took me a few tries to actually make, you know, get it just the way I wanted it, so. Alright, so once you have created this really nice curve with a bunch of, you know, loops in it, go ahead and do a duplicate, so an Apple or a Command D. And then don't do anything as far as moving it, because we're going to actually move it up. So press W and then make sure your pivot point is in the center, so do a central, do a center pivot. And then we're just going to bring this up. And there you go. Uh, seems to be a little too big, so maybe I might go ahead and just make these a little smaller. So There we go, that looks pretty good, that looks reasonable. Alright, so once you have uh, done that, make sure you have your Senate pivot in both of your lines, and then once you have those curves ready to go, select them both, go to your Surfaces tab, and do a loft. But before we go ahead and press loft, let's go into the option box right here. Okay, so let's first thing, let's go to edit, reset settings. So we have all of our settings are at its default um, things. Then we'll go ahead and press um, output geometry. Let's make this a polygon. We could go with the NURBS, but the only downside to NURBS is it will make the object appear very, very nicely, like it will do a, a better job than polygons. However, if you try to convert it to a poly from a NURBS, it's going to ruin it. So, best option, polygons. Uh, type, let's go with quads. Tessellation method, let's go with general. Um, for the initial tessellation controls, let's make sure we have our number U to 32. And same thing with V, 32. Use chord height and apply. And there we go. So we've got ourselves a very nice looking object. Uh, you know, a really nice curtain. So pretty cool, if I were to say so myself. So, And then if you want it, you can smooth it out. It creates a little bit more, but still, you know, it's just the same. So anyway, um, I did actually grab a reference photo for the curtain, so let me go ahead and just minimize this and select this. And as you can see, the curtain that I've selected, you know, there's a there's a um, an indent into the actual curtain. So obviously, we're going to have to figure out a way to to um, initiate that, so then we can achieve this design. So, and these are just sort of and this was just an image I pulled off of Google Images, and it's basically hanging from a window. So obviously this is the reference photo that I'm going to be using to sort of go with. So, All right, so how do we uh, achieve that? Well, there's a really underrated tool, in my opinion, that doesn't get used a lot, and it's called the Lattice Tool. And what this 
tool is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to manipulate certain verts on the um, object to manipulate them in a way where you can actually move them over so it won't ruin the actual geometry um, at all. You know, let me even show you. So let's go ahead and go to our animation tab and go to create deformers, the lattice tool. So let's uh, click on that. So now it with the lattice tool, it creates this box all around the object. So make sure you have the, um, the object selected in order for the lattice tool to go all around it. Now what it's gonna, the lattice tool is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to select um, certain verts on the lattice and then it's going to manipulate the verts and the edges on here. So now keep in mind if you're going to use the lattice tool for anything else um, you must have, you're going to, it's probably recommended that you have quite a bit of verts and edges on your object because if you do, let's say for example make a simple cube and with the certain, with the default cube there's no edges or verts for the lattice to select so therefore it's not going to really do anything because it needs to go, um, it needs to grab onto something that's why that's pretty much how the lattice tool works so here I'll even show you for all your visual people so for the T divisions, let's instead of five, let's make this about an eight, so we can increase that, so we can have more control. And then to select the lattice tool, you actually need to do a right click and then lattice point, and then it's going to um, highlight the thing blue, and then you can see that you can select it. So basically, to achieve this look, or basically trying to get it similar to this, what we're going to do is we're going to select maybe from let's say here select all these verts and then we're going to move them this way so there you go so now we are moving the verts in this in this certain direction so now it seems like the curtain is being um, held at a certain point and then same thing with uh, all the other verts you have selected just bring them on in to your um, to the appropriate side or just your preferred choice of where you want them. So now we have something similar to the actual reference photo that we have. So and sort of kind of just obtaining or sort of going off of this photograph we can see that there's an indent in the curtain itself. So you know we have this straight line going downward but then it indents and then it kind of goes outward right from there. So let's create this um, indent right here. So let's um, minimize that. Let's go back into our setting here. Now let's see. Let's probably bring this out and bring this out a little more and then we have this indent right here. So have it right there. So now when we select these we can probably bring these out a little more so then we can obviously you know show or emphasize the curve to it. So something pretty cool. So just kind of play around with it. It's a lot of tweaking. It's a lot of your kind of eyeballing it seeing how you think it's supposed to look and then going off of your reference photo. Now we do notice one thing about these curtains is that they have this um, strap going all around it which is holding it in place. So if you want to go ahead and do some, make something similar you can try doing a um, creating a torus. So let's just create a simple torus and then I guess depending on how thick or thin you want it I'll make it just maybe this size and you can go ahead and place this in the middle of the object of the curtains just so you can actually show that hey you know the curtains are being held by something instead of it just being there um, voluntarily obviously that wouldn't make sense because that's just not re that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever because it needs to be held by something so so basically kind of just loop around this ring here to your prefer to your preferred uh, choice and make sure it's sort of around it perfectly and then creating that tight now creating that tightness look we'll go ahead and select the lattice and then we'll go and just squish these together so now it seems like they're being squished into them rather than just being you know 
stretched out. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it for um, the, the for making window curtains. So go ahead and make yourself some curtains. Um, obviously, there's probably you know other ways or more um, techniques into achieving such a, a nice looking curtain. But this is sort of for just for demonstration purposes and how to make it in a um, for the sake of expediency. So. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Otherwise, I hope that this was helpful, and we'll see you in the next video. So, take care.